A Southern California congressman has introduced legislation for a shorter work week. It's called the 32 hour work week act and for what it would do and who would benefit here and whether it has a chance of becoming reality is representative Mark Takano of Riverside, California. Uh, representative Takano, thank you so much for joining us first uh, with your plan. Uh, 32 hours, would that be considered full time employment? It would be considered full time employment um, after which uh, the employee would be, would be entitled to earn overtime. So the uh, my my legislation would basically uh, reduce uh, the 40 hour standard work week to 32 hours a week. Um, and just like uh, at the current situation, earning over 40 hours a week would mean time and a half pay. That same time and a half pay would begin after 32 hours a week under my legislation. So, so now, Andre, it's important to understand that uh, employers under this bill would not be uh, mandated uh, to uh, do anything in, in terms of keeping uh, employees uh, longer or to reduce their hours to that amount. So this is not about taking away hours at all. Uh, this is simply giving leverage to employees uh, to gotcha. begin earning overtime after the 32nd hour. And so besides giving the leverage to the employees, what, what other benefits um, uh, do, would the employees have for doing something like this, going to a 32-hour work week? And, and in fact, what benefit would businesses have for this as well? Well, there, there are important reasons uh, why both employer and employee can benefit. Uh, a better work-life balance, um, perhaps better uh, outcomes in terms of health, and so reduced health claims. Uh, would, would be part of it. Our environment would also benefit. Uh, if we were to have a new norm of a four day work week, because we know that we burn less carbon on Saturday and Sunday. And um, I think we can extrapolate that that would happen um, on, uh, you know, on a Friday uh, that people have off. Uh, basically, we're looking at a workforce that has gotten used to more flexible uh, working conditions because of the pandemic. Um, and also, um, I think people are looking for, uh, you know, uh, a sense of better balance in their lives, especially after they've seen mm -hmm. more than 600,000 of our fellow Americans perish and others get more seriously ill. People understand that time yeah. is just as important as money. Yeah, they're focusing uh, on their families. We're seeing that a lot now, especially since the pandemic. So are you getting any pushback at all from the business community about doing something like this? Oh, sure. There's some in the business community that are pushing back. But there's some in the business community that are also uh, moving ahead. I mean, uh, Kickstarter, for example, is a tech company, well-known tech company. They're piloting a four-day work week. And in many cases, uh, businesses that are uh, in a highly competitive labor market for highly skilled people, offering employees uh, a four-day work week is a strong attraction point after, uh, you know, you can offer all the money you want, uh, you know, some of these companies, attracting talent then becomes uh, about other things like shorter working hours and uh, other companies I think are, are gonna be hard pressed to resist uh, major players in the tech sector if they uh, move toward a four day work week, it's going to they're going to have to match that. So you're trying to spur, uh, this, so, spur this as, a, as, as something that uh, many businesses try to compete for to compete and get these employees. Yes. Well, look, the, the conversations happening in the tech space are obviously about very valuable employees and attracting the best talent. The 32 hour work week was one of those points. These are often employees that are exempt from the wage and hour laws. But you know what? My 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 bill, which is about the wage and hour laws, uh, is sort of catalyzing and focusing the discussion and bringing and elevating and uh, amplifying this discussion. Uh, and I think for hourly employees and say the exempt employees uh, in the high tech space, these conversations really do need to be happening simultaneously. And let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, the bill doesn't necessarily address um, what you call misclassification, which is to say an employer uh, could just switch their employees perhaps to contract work. Uh, why isn't that in the bill? Well, um, we're looking strictly at, for most employees. I mean, the classification issue is a is a separate issue. We wanted to really, uh, sh the, what this bill really does is, I mean, it, it, it averts the claim that uh, that working hours will, will be shortened. No, not necessarily. Um, 
that employers are going to be in a place where uh, they're going to cut hours. They don't necessarily, they don't have to do that. I, in fact, I think most employers are going to, uh, in sectors of the economy and sectors of the work workforce where competition for labor is fierce, uh, they're going to want their employees to be uh, working uh, overtime for that fifth day. Um, and so this is really, this is really about looking at the norm of yeah. the five-day work week, which we currently have, yeah. uh, and the opening that we have to to change things in a fundamental way, uh, to change the norm yeah, and we, to to have a better to have a better normal. And we know other countries are trying this, uh, or even have gone through with it so far. So finally, here we only have a few seconds left. You're likely sure. need support from the other side of the aisle uh, if this is to move forward. Do you have any bipartisan support on this bill? Not yet, not yet. Um, but you know what? There is a strong argument uh, that the that many in the faith community uh, would be interested in having uh, people have more time uh, to put their uh, their efforts into matters of the spirit, matters of the family. Um, so there isn't there is a conservative uh, argument uh, for this. It's on the cultural side. Um, you know, stronger, better families. Um, more balanced lives, uh, you know, render unto Caesar. <laughs> it's an interesting you know, it's like, it, take, considering yeah. many people are thinking about family right now in the middle of COVID, having work from home, and they want to focus exactly. on spending more time with their family. That's a, it's a good thought. Uh, we'll see if uh, others uh, pick up on that idea and help you move uh, forward with this idea. Uh, Representative Mark DeCano, author of the proposed 32-hour Workweek Act, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. We appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm.